much like Nick Diaz from the United States runs triathlons, but he says that his competition is in strongman runs, which is an obstacle course, is much tougher than a triathlon. Round one. Oh, they're coming right after each other. Body shots by Devonta. rivalry like the Netherlands for Kroonhart and Devonte being from Belgium right here in Brussels. Devonte's got a nice stiff jab. Just very, very, push. very good jab. Good technical jab. Got the power. Switches to southpaw momentarily. Low kicks. Kroonhart. Beautiful left hook to the body by Devonte. It's funny, Frank, in fights like this, it's not really a feel-out period because every shot is trying to hurt the guy. They're just going for it. I like that. But you know, it's one, one of the things that makes Glory so exciting. The rule change. You know, the, when Corey's put this thing together, when Boss, all these guys got in, in the mind and put this together, it took the experience. 40 years of fighting. What a great combination by Mark DeBonte, ending up again with that left hook to the body. And you're right, Frank. Core Hammers, Boss Bone originally formed Golden Glory, which was a management team and a fight team. And then on board came Martin De Jong. And they decided, hey, listen, why don't we turn this thing into a global organization? And now here we are. With some of the greatest fighters on the planet, definitely. We're seeing two rising stars here. And Kuhnhart was Devonte. And Devonte seems to be getting the better of the combinations here. Ronard had a wonderful war with Nicky Holson who will come up in a couple of fights. In a fight that went to an extra round that many thought he actually won. Just goes to show you, you don't get any favors here in glory. You have to fight the tough guys. Devonte with a nice combination and shut it all down with a quick tie-up. He's very calm. Not a lot of wasted energy and lead right here. Oh, things away. Excellent round for that man there, Mark DeVos. Well, this round was not short on action. No, they did not feel each other out. They beat each other right in the head and kept going for it. Steve Beautiful knee by Devonte to start this thing off, followed by just crisp, well-placed combinations. Look at that, hook to the head, hook to the body. Steps back, finds his range, and he's right back ready for action again. This is beautiful, beautiful kickbox. Absolutely. What I'm seeing here is Mark Devonte seems to be just a little bit more relaxed. Then Merkel Second top, that up maybe to experience, yeah. chalked it up to a lot Coach of things. Southern, he please. looks like a killer out there. He looks like a veteran of 91 fights and only, come on, he's so young. So young. See what our judges had to say. And they are going to agree with us, except for one feels it was a 10-10 round. Okay. Round two. But the majority, four out of five judges gave it a 10-9 round for DeMonte in the red corner. Three. Look at that teeth kick yeah. to the body. Oh, I thought he was going to go behind the back with a bolo punch. Oh, had a rough house going on, and you know what? Got him with a shot. Marco Bloomberg needs to do that. The 
technical battle is going to favor so far the taller man, and that's uh, Levante. Yeah, he needs to turn this off. Oh, oh, look at that. His eyes are going. Wait a minute. What day is this? Wow. That's going to be tough for him oh, to continue. That was a no, massive This shot. is over. Marshall Gronhart with a knee out of nowhere. Ended things early here in round number two. A huge knockout for that man. That was a brilliant knockout. You saw the look on Tabonte's face. He had no idea where he was or what was going on, and it was just oh. well-timed right on the button. He dropped like a sack of potatoes. Look at it again. Oh, right on the chin. Well, we keep saying as these knees come flying up, we're just so, it's like they're so dangerous, and when you see the result, I mean, literally, shut his brain off in one second with that one strike. The rising knee is definitely the one-shot solution. And Devonte was throwing a punch right in the middle of it. He never saw it. Look at his face. He has no idea he's even in the Glory World Series. He has no clue what's going on. Nice counter knee right on the button. And Ronhardt knew it was done. He walked away like a champ, and here he is celebrating what should be an incredible step up in career for him. Fight! The bell in round one, the heavily favored Myrtle Grunhardt in the white gloves. And the local wild card entry, Nicola Gallo in the black gloves. Grunhardt ranked number five, trying to snap a two-fight losing streak in glory. In fact, lost to Chad Sugden at Glory 23 in Las Vegas in August. Sugden was supposed to be in the tournament, but he sidelined with an injury. Gunnar coming out aggressive with that left kick to the body. Nicolo Gallo, known as the tractor, started Kung Fu as a little boy, started kickboxing at 17, went 27 and eight as an amateur, turned pro in 2009. He's 0-1 in the glory ring. He's 19-7 and one overall with six wins via a form of knockout. Right. Much more experience for Grunhardt, who is 56, 18 and three with 32 knockouts, but only two and three in glory. But those two wins via a form of knockout. Trap, trap. Yeah, Grunhardt likes to turn around inside the distance for sure, and he's going to want to do that and get it out of this fight quickly so he doesn't waste a lot of energy. Yeah, Grunhardt has been an enigma throughout his career. Mercurial character. He was the K1 World Max Tournament champion in 2012, stopping the likes of Yasuhiro Kido, Mike Zambides, and then knocking out then stablemate Archer Koshenko in the final, but again, Having tasted defeat in back-to-back -back fights against Chad Sugden and Sitichai sits on Pinong, who we will see challenge for the lightweight title in the main event later tonight. So many of these fighters have connecting stories. They really do. Gunhart being very patient here, staying on the outside, picking his shots, scoring points. Yeah, these strikes are his trademark, his knockout of glory. Mark Devon at Glory 2 was a prime example. He stepped in with a knee to the jaws, a counter to Devon's left hook, and Devon was defeated, and now he's all over Nicola Gallo here in round one. Rick! Rick! Don't watch he's your got elbows. a thing called the down punch. When he throws the right hand, and he throws it at a downward angle, he get more power that way. And the guy crouches over, trying to defend. Under a minute remaining in the first round, Bernhardt trained with Mike Pessinger, one of the top Mike. trainers in the sport, beginning as a teenager. He's been fighting for Mike's gym in the Netherlands ever since. And really, his, his style embodies the gym's philosophy. He loves to put heavy pressure on his opponent, always looking for the finish. Always. Watch your hands. I don't think Nicola Gallo has landed a shot there, landed a right the house and a left on the house kick as soon as I see that. Gallo fights on a sport ring, Cantanzaro, hailing from the Reggio di Calabria here in Italy. He's been described as a fighter who likes to always be in the center of the ring, holding the center. And they are in the center now with 10 seconds left in a rather cautious opening round. Again, you have to win two fights in one night in order to gain a title shot against Nikki Holtzkin. Good finish to the round for Bruno. How'd you score? I got that 10-9 easy for Virgil Grunhardt. Time for round number two here in Monza, Italy. The first of our two semifinals. In the welterweight contender tournament, Myrtle Grunhardt in the white gloves. 
Nicola Gallo in the black. It was a bit of a feel-out round in that first one. Grunhardt landed the better shots, of course, but he's not going for the gusto, and he's smart to not do that. He's not wasting a lot of energy, either. Gallo has to know that he's got to mug Merkel Grunhardt to win this fight. He can't win at a distance. Favorite in this fight, putting it on Nicola Gallo. Looking for the finish, Gallo shelling up in the corner. Knee to the midsection by Grunhardt. Bad place to be against Merkel Grunhardt. Brunard chasing a rematch with current champion Nikki Holskin still bitterly Watch disputes the decision loss he suffered to the champion back in 2010. A proud new papa, his son Jafi, was born in February, so has a new mouth to feed and is fighting with a, a bigger sense of purpose, but again against Nikola Gallo. This is expected as a time called by the referee. Yeah, there's a nasty cut. And another cut. Wow, right between the eyes. Really bad place. Oh. Stop. Stop. And the fight is over. And Nicola the Tractor Gallo, run over by the bulldozer known as Myrtle the Predator Grunhardt, opens a nasty gash between the eyes, and the Predator has booked passage to the tournament final later tonight. And here we have that flying knee from Nurko Grunhardt right off the middle. Gentlemen, you know the rules. Clinching is only allowed if you're working. So, so respect my commands at all times, protect yourself at all times. Fight good, fight clean, fight hard. May the best man win. Any questions from you? Any questions from you? Judge time, fight! Glory 31, welterweight contender tournament semifinal number one. Kareem Ben Mansour in the white shorts and Myrtle Grunhardt in the black shorts. Scheduled for three three-minute rounds. I feel for uh, Kareem to be successful here, he needs to be first and use his movement to set up his combinations. Already, Grunhardt has backed Ben Mansour. Go! 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 He landed One, a big left knee in that two, exchange. Three, four, referee, five, Charles, six, giving seven, Ben Mansour eight. a standing in count. Fight! It could have been a knockdown because it, it looked like maybe he used the ropes to hold himself up. Ray! What a way to Ray. start Ray. off this semifinal number one. No clinch for both of you. One more knockdown for Myrtle and this fight's over. So he might want to put a little bit more pressure on Ben Mansour. Stop! Exactly right. In Stop. a tournament semifinal, two Stop. knockdowns in a round result in a TKO. So right away, Ben Mansour has his back up against the ropes. Ben Mansour uses good combination. seen Myrtle use that left knee in his last few fights, but it's one of his most dangerous weapons. Somehow, Ben Mansour surviving. Myrtle Grunhardt teeing off. Go up, no. Come on, come on. Come on. Tobias Gerald Fight. says that was not a knockdown. So Grunhardt goes back to work. He keeps landing that right hand as well. Break. Stop back. Break. The big punches Clinching. for Myrtle seem to Fight. be that right, the right hook and, and the left knee. Under a minute to go. Round number one, high kick from Grunhardt. A rude awakening for Kareem Ben Mansour in his glory debut. Ben Mansour needs to use his movement. He doesn't want to stay against the ropes like that. Stay in the center of the ring. Use your lateral movement. Ben Mansour needs to keep using that low kick. As Myrtle's pinned up defending his head, that's a perfect time to land the low kick. Stop. Fighters clenching. No holding. Broken but. up and right away. Ben Mansour is given a warning from our referee for Stop. clenching too long. No holding. Fight. Warns him again. Myrtle Grunhart Stop. finishing round number one in style. Here we go, look 
looking at that the highlights and what was called a knockdown. It didn't look like a knockdown there. It looked like he was just holding on to uh, Grunhardt from falling down, from more of a, a, a slip from falling down. But again, the referee calls it a knockdown, so it counts. What a knee there from Grunhardt through the guard of Ben Mansour. Myrtle has a beautiful switch left knee and has beautiful knockouts with it. One of the best uh, would be from Glory 2 Brussels against Mark Devon is one of his main highlights on Grunhardt's record. Cook out. Come on, my corner. Mike, come on. Again, Mertel Grunhardt taking his time, as a lot Mertel. of Mike's gym fighters do, Fight. to start this second round with the knockdown. Grunhardt takes that round 10-8. Somehow, Kareem Ben Mansour survived that round. He'll need to turn it up here in the second, Joseph. Yeah, it looks like Myrtle's, he can't really gas himself out, so he needs to kind of slow down. Stop. And pick his shots Stop. a little bit more on the outside. He's always in a tournament, too. If he was able to make it out of that first round quickly, such a big key to get back to that locker room, regroup, and really heal your body before you go back in there. Yeah, especially being the first fight in the tournament, you have extra time than the, the second group, so that's an extra 20 minutes of recovery time. Total strikes, big edge there for Mertel Grunhardt. Breaks the back. Clinch and are broken up again. Green Ben Mansour was warned for ex for sustained clinching in that first round. Ben Mansour is doing a good job now at controlling the center of the ring. This is where he needs Breaks to fight. It's a good way to avoid the knee and it shuts down the output of Grunhardt. Great action here in the welterweight contender tournament semifinal number one. Martel Grunhardt in the black shorts, white gloves, and Kareem Ben Mansour in the white shorts and black gloves. Ben Mansour needs to stay active with his combinations. The more active he is, the less output of, of Grunhardt's going to have. Suddenly, Ben Mansour working the body. Great. You have to be Whoa. careful in that with Grunhardt. He's very good at no throwing holding. counter punches when Fight. you think he's hurt. Approaching a minute to go in round number two, scheduled for three. You wonder how much Ben Mansour so you know, making his glory debut was affected by maybe the bright lights here in the mecca of kickboxing Amsterdam, because he seems to be settling in a groove now. Yeah, he looks comfortable, and this is what he's really known for, watching his uh, some of his past fights. Once he gets comfortable and starts throwing those combinations, it's very hard to beat. Greenhart delivering some low kicks, misses with the right. And Ben Mansour oh. counters. What Ben Mansour is doing is he's mixing up his punches and, and, it, and mixing in either a left or right low kick. This way he's always having Greenhart guessing, and he can't really block. Stop! From the clinch, Greenhart delivered a knee, but it was ruled no oh, knockdown. No pushing, okay? It kind of Fight. looked like he buckled there from that knee. That easily could have been a knockdown. Grunhardt having success with those knees getting through the guard. End of round number two. Let's get to know our fighters a little bit more, beginning with Kareem Ben Mansour. Kickboxing and full contact karate background. Very physical fighter. And as you mentioned, Joseph defeated Johan Congolo back in 2013. His opponent, the Predator, Mertel Grunhardt, a wealth of tournament experience. He lost the title fight against Nikki Holtzman at Glory 26 Amsterdam. Wants to erase that memory here in this building tonight. His last fight with Holtzman was a very good fight. Uh, one of the best we've seen, Grunhardt. 
He used really great movement, uh, footwork, angles, distance. Coach uh, But I think what the referees were looking Come at on, that Mike. fight was uh, Nicky scoring a little bit more cumulative damage uh, with his strikes that he was throwing. Stay in the corner. Stay in the corner. Come on, us. Fighters touch gloves, and we are set. Third and final round of this welterweight contender tournament semifinal number one. Grunhardt and Ben Mansour. Ron Kruk and Joseph Altolini here with you ringside. Todd Grissom backstage. Please visit our website for the latest glory information at glorykickboxing.com. Beautiful. I'm going to switch high kick from Myrtle that landed. But again, Ben Mansour is just staying in the pocket and throwing combinations. Big right from Grunhardt. Grunhardt found that right hand in those knees again. He needs to keep up with it in this round. Ben Mansour in a lot of trouble. Grunhardt. Down. Not to Not to ben Mansour. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Are you ready? Come on. Ben Mansour looking to hang on. Murta Grunhardt knocks him down again. He's dead. He's dead. Murta Grunhardt is moving on in the glory welterweight contender tournament semifinal. Yeah, Grunhardt here looking at Nicky Holtzian. He really wants that rematch. He just basically looked at him and called him out. High kick there from Grunhardt was the beginning of the end. Yeah, and then he threw that push kick, and then he found that right hand that he found in the first round. But instead of that left knee, it was a beautiful right knee that Myrtle was landing. And then he went to the body uh, that really hurt Ben Mansour. We'll make it official right after this. Hey guys, you understand the rules that you're fighting to, yeah? Take your at all times, obey my commands at all times. Do you have any questions? Touch gloves if you like, push back. Proposition, it could go either way. It, this is a very interesting fight, and this is why I think uh, this could be the fight of the night and the fight I've been most excited for. Our last fight featuring Morales' victory saw a lot of power punches. This fight should show a lot of power kicks and power knees. And it's going to be from a lot of those power kicks are going to come from Tong Chai. And he's looking to already slow Myrtle down with those low kicks. But Myrtle's going to want to get on the inside and see if he can expose Tong Chai's boxing. Because Thais traditionally don't box much because the scoring in Thailand is based on kicks and knees. So they hold their boxing back. Punches aren't scored as highly in, in Muay Thai as kicks are, correct? That's correct. So you're going to see Tong Cha have really solid kicks. And especially from his camp in Sitsong Pinong, they're known for, for being power kickers. We talked about Myrtle Gruenhardt sometimes lacking focus. How about Tong Chai, who has very notice, notably in Thailand, it's in the front pages of the paper, has run out of camp sometime to go gamble on chicken fighting. He leaves camp, they can't find him for a few days, they finally wrangle him back in. He has an addiction to chicken fighting on the back streets of Thailand. It's probably interesting for him. He's been fighting since he's been 10 years old, so he needs that excitement outside of the training as well. So I can see why he'd, he'd be addicted to it. I don't think there is, at least I hope there isn't a lot of underground chicken fighting clubs here in Chicago. So hopefully he didn't get into much trouble last night. He looks fresh right now here against Myrtle Gruenhardt halfway through round one. Those inside knees of Tong Chai do a lot of damage. And once he's on the inside, he does really well. Holding, okay? You are not here to hold, you're here to fight. Do you both understand? Yeah? Time in, but And a couple of punches land from Gruenhardt, and that right hand sweeps right across Tong Chai's face. Speaking to referee Paul Nichols, he knows right. this fight's gonna have a, could have a lot of clinching because of Tong Chai, so he's really establishing a no clinch rule right away. You can clinch and hold in Muay Thai. In fact, that's where a lot of the right. damage is done. You can clinch in glory, but you gotta initiate a knee strike right away. 
It's been a sloppy opening round for sure. Tong Chai's kicks, I think they're hurting Myrtle. And those knees on the inside. Oh, Myrtle gets knocked back against the rope. Right. Hard round to score. It's been so right. such a start and stop affair. You don't see that a lot in glory kickboxing. A right hand lands from Tong Chai. Tong Chai's right. looking very impressive, right. especially with those. And that may have been a low blow as Myrtle goes down to one knee. And you have to remember, Tong Chai doesn't really know English. Public warning, number one. Public warning number one, you're holding, okay? Next time I deduct a point. Let's take a look at this knee. Tong Chai says I got him right in the stomach. It's hard to tell sometimes with the angles because sometimes it's the, the shin goes under and could hit the cup and the cup vibrates uh, the genitalia there. <laughs> Timing, what? Well said. Tong Chai trying to mow Gruenhardt down, who meets him with a straight right hand. And look at Tong Chai just trying to bully Gruenhardt right now. That's what Myrtle needs. And now they're opening up. That's what Myrtle and needs to do. Get in there and throw his box in. And look at Tong Chai getting rocked here. And he's still no, coming forward. And he survives the round. What a finish to round one. What a finish. Myrtle Gruenhardt got pissed off from that low knee. And there he goes. And that's what he needs to do. He needs to get on the inside and keep throwing those punches. Tong Chai can't get caught up in that style of fighting. Enough of the patience. Let your hands and feet go, and that's what Gruenhardt did. Yeah, Tong Chai's walking right in, trying to get on the inside to throw those knees, and Myrtle had enough of it and started throwing nice straight punches as Tong Chai was coming in. And he's got to throw those punches in bunches, and that's what he's doing as Tong Chai keeps coming forward. But he needs to stay tight. He needs to slow the fight down. This is Myrtle's game if he wants to sit in the pocket and exchange boxing. Forget technique. This is a street fight, ladies and gentlemen. And Tong Chai, as wobbled as he was, is already out of his corner, chomping at the bit, going right after Myrtle again. The tie terminator. And Tong Chai was winning that round until Myrtle really utilized those straight punches, drawing Tong Chai in. So time, time, time. That's it. I call time. One point. One point. One point. Neutral. There's referee Paul Nichols deducting a point. Really want to establish the control, but Myrtle really showing. Let's see if we can see a little better angle here. Oh, it's referee calling the stop, and that's why he deducted the point. Well, Grunhardt certainly yeah. sold it. Sometimes you have to do that. Let's see if Myrtle comes back the same Funny. way he did last Funny. time he was hurt. So Tong Chai perhaps losing the first round and now a point behind in the second. The flying knee. And you could just feel the hate between these two fighters. I'm surprised Tong Chai keeps walking in like that. When he was keeping his distance and throwing those low kicks is when he was doing the, the most damage and being most right. successful. Right. Right. But now he's, he's fighting Myrtle's right. fight and th this is what Myrtle wants. It's been sloppy, it's been violent. It's been entertaining. Fight. Right, right, right. Let go, let go. Fight. His trainer told us how nasty Tong Chai could be, and it's been on display in this fight. Throwing knees after the bell, holding, clinching. And Myrtle's such a, a tall fighter, so Tong Chai is having a hard time on getting those knees above the waist, and could be the height differential, could be a, a few different things, but he's got to stay out of that clinch. 
He needs to throw those kicks on the Ooh. outside. Boy, Myrtle set up that right hand, but it just missed. No strikes. Break. What? And you can tell, oh, Myrtle turned his back on his opponent. That's a huge no-no in any sport, much less fighting. Hong Chai needs to kick. Don't know why he's continually trying to Break. walk in and use no his strikes. knees. No strikes. There's a kick he asked for, a high kick from Tong Chai. But it was his low kicks, and then he's closing distance by jumping in with his knees. And then he's going to constantly get warned for being in the clinch. Let's see whose fitness level is higher. They're already exhausted, you can tell. We still have a full round to go. Runehart, a former title challenger, believes he can get back to that spot very soon. How soon, you ask? Well, he told us earlier this week. If Felice has a, a kickboxing background, I know she's a big kickboxing fan, and she always supports here in Chicago. And plenty to like so far tonight. Round one of this contest was fantastic. They slowed down to the second round, but here we are in the third and final round. Important to note that Tong Chai was deducted a single point in the second round. So even if he run one round two, Joe, it was a 9-9 round. Yeah, it's the first round was close, but it was Myrtle really doing a good job at the end after he got hurt. But I still don't understand why Tong Chai's strategy is to continually throw knees in the clinch. He was doing so much good damage on the outside with his kicks. Even with Myrtle, Myrtle should try to keep that distance, kind of keep that space, keep using his jab and straight punches, because he knows Tong Chai has to come forward. So he's successful when he's throwing straight punches and constantly keeping distance. Landed a good uppercut there. And when it comes to punches, Grunhardt will win this up. Gloves up, gloves up, what? The Thai Terminator is down but not out as the Predator from Holland hones in. Myrtle's utilizing those uppercuts and hooks. Down he goes again. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's all over. Myrtle. Well, the 37th of his professional career. Well done, Myrtle. He was having a, a little bit of a hard time in the beginning with those kicks, but he really utilized that boxing and those uppercuts and those hooks in that third round. Well done, Myrtle Grunart, to expose the boxing of Tom Chai. Here's the first knockdown, Joe. It was Myrtle getting on the inside, mixing in big left hooks and uppercuts. Tong Chai couldn't handle those constant left hooks, putting him to the to the mat. The second knockout, that's when Myrtle was mixing in those uppercuts and hooks again. Not stopped, and that was it for Tong Chai. Couldn't handle that constant pressure and boxing of Myrtle. Gentlemen, you understand the rules that you're fighting to. Protect yourself all times, obey my commands at all times. Do you have any questions? Touch gloves if you like. Fights for the world title against either Nikki Holskin or Cedric Tumbe. Lot riding on this fight. You're gonna see it's Gregorian with forward pressure where Myrtle's gonna try to keep the fight on the outside, use his footwork, hit on angles. Gregorian told us the more that Gregorian throws, the more opportunities I have to counterpunch. And that's where he excels. Yeah, he's staying long, so he has that vision where he can pick his shots. This is why he's using that footwork on the outside. According to MMA odds breakers, 
Grunhart, a minus 215 favorite in this fight against Gregory. Great! Punching is forbidden unless you throw an immediate knee or a strike. It's not like boxing where guys just hang on each other for round after round. That is illegal. This fight was supposed to happen last 41 in Holland, but Gregory had to pull up from a broken toe, so we'll see if that's going to affect some of his kicking. He was criticized for that withdrawal by Grunhardt, who said, listen, if he couldn't fight three weeks ago, he can't fight tonight. Out of his hook, his toe, he'll say quick. Nice flying knee from Myrtle. That's one of his favorite shots to land and many knockouts with it. And that knee is very dangerous for Gregorian, who's coming in a straight line, so I expect Myrtle to throw it frequently. And Gregorian with a 73% knockout ratio. That is very impressive, especially for a welterweight. Three fourths of his wins have ended in knockout. He's very explosive. He stays on the outside. Sometimes you think he's tired or out, and then he just blasts with these explosive combinations. Excuse me, from Grunhardt. Bit of a sloppy round, Joe. Gregorian would love this just to be a brawl, would he not? Yeah, that's what he's going to do. Eventually, as the round goes on, I expect him to stay in there more and just throw. Like they're doing right now. Gregorian has his feet planted on the canvas, just sitting down with his punches. That knee may have stunned Gregorian a little bit. Looks a little wobbly. There's those uppercuts. And he's being wobbled. Oh, nearly knocked down. Bounce back off the ropes. And Gregorian not all there right now. Good finish to the round for Virgil Grunhardt. You saw they didn't touch gloves before this fight, and yesterday things weren't all that friendly during their stay at stare down at the way in either. Now there's a lot of bad blood between these two, and Myrtle made it very vocal that he doesn't want people in his face, so he was waiting for Harut to get in his face so he could punch back, but Harut was able to keep his cool and they were able to keep the fight in the ring. You know more about the welterweight division than this man, a former welterweight champion of the world here in Glory, Joseph Baltolini. My name is Todd Christian. Still to come tonight, it is our main event. Nikki Holskin versus Cedric Dube Joe. Your thoughts on that? Well, I think it's going to be an epic fight because Nikki was so dominant for so long, hasn't lost in over four years, so this sparked the fire. So Doom Bay is going to have to use that same style we saw in that first fight at Glory, Germany, where he was be able to be tricky with his footwork, able to attack on different angles, and don't be a standing target for Nikki. So Doom Bay ready what? for battle tonight, and that will be a five-round world title fight in our main event. And the winner of that title fight already knows who their first challenger will be. One of these two gentlemen, Grunhardt or Gregorian, and it was Grunhardt who won round one According to all five judges, oh my! Defend yourself at all times! Grunhardt with a big right hand KO! Fight the ring! We've got to fight the ring! People are attacking Myrtle Grunhardt! It's insanity! A group Gregorian turned his back on his opponent. The referee hadn't stopped it. Hey, hey, Grunhardt had every right to throw that.
I've never seen it either. Here's the knockout once again. Virgil Grunhardt with the knee. And this is when the fight was really over because Gregory turned his back and said, what is happening? And then, boom. I'm not too sure why he turned his back like that. It looked like he was walking to that corner, whether he was dazed or who knows if he thought the round was over. Gentlemen, you understand the rules you're fighting to. Protect yourself at all times, play the commands at all times. Do you have any questions? Touch gloves if you like. Crown, but witnessing his fellow Moroccan square off against Myrtle Broodhart, scheduled for three rounds. Not a lot of people expected to go that far. No, I just adjusted my seat because I'm expecting to jump up. But let's see the pressure that Jiraiya is going to bring. I'd expect Myrtle to try to use his knees versus that forward pressure. Oh boy, Jiraiya almost hit him behind the head. Nice job by him to slow up that right hand. You gotta give Jiraiya a lot of credit coming into glory really quickly and wanting to take the best in the division. He took Myrtle on his second fight. Not only that, but he's moved up the weight class, Joe. A lot of people think that Jiraiya should be fighting at a lower weight. Yeah, that's what Myrtle was saying, that he's not a real welterweight. So let's see the power that Jiraiya's gonna have tonight. Jiraiya's pivoting off and then trying to counter with his punches. Ever since the Nikki Holskin fights, fight! Myrtle Greenhart's been looking for a new rival. Maybe this is him. Maybe it's Jiraiya. Good left hand on the way in. I also like Jiraiya's low kicks as well. Fight! He runs Team Coliseum out of Utrecht. They got a brand new beautiful gym. He says, listen, I can't control Jiraiya. Hey! Oh, and a right hand to the knockdown. Paul Nichols says, no, it was close. Yeah. One, two, and it is a knockdown. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. The first shot, it wasn't. But so now Jiraiya with everything to do here. Paul Nichols thought about it for a little while. We don't usually see him do that. What? You can see that Virgil Brunhardt's putting everything he's got to each of these punches. Yeah, he's going for the knockout, especially with his knees and the Break. way he's throwing his punches. Let's go. Fight! Gotta get Jiraiya credit. He's been stepping forward. Going right after the big Let's go! More experience. Virgil Brunhardt. Fight! Yeah, especially now with that controversial knockdown. Extra pressure on Jiraiya to, to come forward. Break! Fight! Break! So the end of a very controversial round one. We'll go back and look at the knockdown here. Take us through it, Joe. Well, it was Myrtle really trying to wind up, but it looked like Jiraiya's feet just kind of slipped out behind him. You know, I don't think Paul said no at the beginning. He just wanted to get Myrtle back into the corner, in the neutral corner. And then when he turned around, Jiraiya was right on it. Watch us if we see another angle of Paul Nichols. Yeah, it, it did hit the glove. It was not a knockdown, but Paul Nichols, in order to start the count, Grunhardt has to be in the corner, so that's what he was doing. I don't even think Myrtle Grunhardt thought it was a knockdown. But he did need to start counting as soon as Grunhardt was in the corner. Well, Paul Nichols, one of the most veteran and experienced referees here. Oh, he sees that on replay. I wonder if he would still agree that it was a knockdown. Let's go! Jariah's waiting in the center of the ring. That urgency's there. Fight! Brunhardt is soaking wet and dumped water all over. And a knee right into Route 1 connects. Oh, and a right hand! Now that was not teamed a knockdown, and it looked like it was! And here comes Myrtle with that aggressive striking. It's a firefight! This is what the crowd wanted! This is what right. Jiraiya wanted! Right. This is right. exactly what we expected. Here's Myrtle coming. Let's see if he can finish 
Hudson, the Predator, in his hometown. Dry is still standing somehow. Great, great. Fight. Dry's eyes still look dazed. But he's throwing haymakers at the same time. This may be over soon. And it is over. Mertz on Groundhart. Promises he earned his respect from Dariah tonight, and he did it. Yeah, he came out of that second round with a point to prove. He came up with aggressive hands and finally got that finish he called for. And there's a Rook Gregorian who shakes his head. He's the champ, but you know that Grunhardt wins that title shot next. And the crowd giving Gurdle a lot of love in the corner, but this is the end here. Caught him with a right hand. Which I thought was a knockdown, but Myrtle knew he had to come in pressure. You see him really swinging his hands. Shariah kind of dipping his head toward whatever he has, but there's that knee. Mariah, Shariah tries to counter, but here comes Myrtle with that aggressive, unorthodox style striking and finally got that right hand. I tell you what, Shariah showed a lot of heart to get up from that knockdown. Yeah, Myrtle knew Shariah was swinging those big, wild punches, so Myrtle beat him to the punch. throwing everything behind those shots. And just when he angles off is when you see that right hand go split the defense of Jariah. And that was a uh, Paul Nichols call. You know, it's interesting because on video and all the interviews, Greenhart would say he's going for the knockout. Gentlemen, you understand the rules that you're fighting to. Protect yourself at all times, obey my commands at all times. It's a title fight, I expect you to fight for it. Touch gloves if you want. Push back. Taking fight. this bout on 12 days notice, it's the stuff dreams are made of and nightmares are made of. What will it be for Troy Jones against one of the best to ever do it and Myrtle Grunhardt? Grunhardt in the white gloves, Troy Trouble Jones in the black. What are you looking for from Jones early in this fight? Well, establishing his jab, and then off the jab, he's gonna try to mix in his kicks, his knees, and his other hands. He's really good at staying patient, setting things up. And he feels his best chances. He knows Myrtle can get wild, and that's when he feels like he can catch him. When you're extremely nervous, as I imagine Troy Jones is, what's the best way to work those nerves out in the ring? Well, it's kind of move. Stay defensively and sit behind a jab. I mean, keep that long distance. Hit and move. And then as you get more comfortable, that's when you sit in the mid-range a little bit more. But Myrtle's a really awkward style fighter, unorthodox. Just when you think you have it, Myrtle comes with these explosions. Watch the knees from Myrtle. Few do it better. Yep. Right now, sharp boxing from Jones. Mixing the jab, following with the right hand. Myrtle's looking for an opportunity to open up and land. Myrtle might just be letting Jones get comfortable. Maybe get a little too comfortable before he strikes. Well, Myrtle didn't know too much about Jones. They're going to learn about each other quickly now. Nobody really knows a lot about Jones. 14 pro fights, just four here in glory, but he's looked outstanding against mid-tier competition. Now he's fighting an elite guy. Yeah, doesn't get any higher than this. And keep in mind, Troy Jones has never gone five rounds. Jones does have a you know, good Muay Thai background where he's used to going five rounds. So he says the pace, you know, and the rounds doesn't, you know, shake him up at all. Did you expect Jones to be the aggressor? Well, I just think, you know, Myrtle's being patient. So Jones has to kind of pop that jab. I mean, Myrtle will do this. Myrtle can kind of fight backwards, and then when the opportunity comes, he explodes with combinations. You can hear Myrtle's coach and trainer, Big Mike, Mike Passanier, barking orders from the corner. Nice low kick there from Jones. Yeah, they're scoring well for him. Myrtle's really throwing a lot of power behind that right hand. There's his knee. Oh, nice right hand. And that is not a knockdown. Quick decision there from our referee, and it looked like the right one. Yeah, definitely the right call. Myrtle was trying to 
do those knees he's known for, and he got pushed back. Myrtle Grunhart, nicknamed the Predator because back in the day he had long hair and they said, hey, you look like the Predator from the movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger. He doesn't look that way anymore, but he kept the nickname. And his signature strike, pretty much a knee from anywhere he wants to throw. Yeah, and he mixes them with his punches, so they're really hard to see. Where Troy Jones, nicknamed Trouble, fighting out of Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. We talked about his finishing power. 11 of his 13 wins by knockout. Former football player at Minnesota State. Graduated with a law degree. And there's the champ, Cedric Dumbe. Had to pull out because of injury. He was supposed to fight here tonight. But you know, he'll be ready to face the winner. I asked him who he wanted to win. He said, well, I hate Myrtle with all my my passion I could possibly give it. So I'm pulling for Troy Jones tonight. Tower. A lot of water in the corner there of Myrtle Grunhart. Yeah, Big Mike likes that sponge splash. He wets half of the audience Fight. when he does it too. Well, both fighters should be now settled in and ready to throw hands here after somewhat of a feel-out opening round. And all five give it to the American. Nice start for Troy Jones. If you can get an early advantage in these first few rounds, you can really take a dominating lead. And right now, his jab and his low kicks scoring the best for him. And if you're just joining us, Nick Kalakis out of Las Vegas handicapped this fight at Myrtle Grunhart minus 140. So about a one and a half favorite. I thought it would be bigger, but he watched the footage and saw what a lot of people see in Troy Jones. Ooh, right hand lands there for Jones. Myrtle answers back. Yeah, Myrtle's really putting a lot behind that right hand. Good jab. Good distance control and counter from Jones. Stats fairly even. Jones landing slightly better. Yeah, he needs to keep up with his low kicks. They're scoring well. Right hand from Grunhart. Yeah, those are the explosions I talk about. Myrtle will stay at one pace. You think that's the pace he's going to bring, and all of a sudden he turns it on. And he comes with ferocity, comes with angles, power. Jones showing he belongs in this fight, at least so far. If he can win this second round, that would mean Myrtle would have to win three straight, Joe. Yeah, Jones now getting comfortable. You can see him switching stances. That's one sign of being comfortable. Say hello to all of Troy Jones' friends and family, including his wife and child. They couldn't make it here from Minnesota on such short notice. We know they're watching with that oh, the right hand just dropped Jones. That is a Two. knockdown, and it came out Three. of nowhere. Four. Myrtle was looking Five. for that right hand. He just found Six. it. Seven. Eight. Gloves up. Jones Fight. says he's okay. Let's see if the Predator can finish this. Jones just ate a knee. When Myrtle sees blood, he comes after you. Jones in trouble again, and he's down for the second time, and he's out on his back. Myrtle Grunhart, the Predator, explodes in the second round and is now the interim welterweight champion of the world. Patience, patience, patience. Once the opportunity arises, the Predator comes alive. After losing the first round on all five judges' scorecards, he didn't panic. He waited for his moment, and now is calling out the real champ, Cedric Dumbe. Yeah, there's a lot of heat, a lot of tension. He's getting a lot of boos from the French fans, but he's feeling good right now. Well, Joe, how did that happen in a matter of seconds? I mean, he, you saw him trying to land that right hand patient with it. He didn't really open up too much, but once he found that opportunity, he went right after it. Here's the first knockdown. Yeah, Jones was uh, doing well, staying patient, but then as soon as Jones went to open up, you saw Myrtle catch that right hand right on. Boom! Right on target. 
Just that aggressive power, especially when Myrtle has you heard. He smells blood, he goes right after it. You see him come inside, throw his punches in combinations. Jab, right hand, followed up. And Troy Jones, you know, goes down to the canvas. And that was it, another look at Grunhardt, who just came alive in the second round. He was biding his time, waiting for the perfect moment, and then he had the perfect finish. Yeah, explosiveness comes out of nowhere, and that's where you see the dangerous and the predator. He's never lacked confidence, Joe, and now he's probably had more than he's had in his life. Yeah, you see him step out of the ring. The tension has built for the rematch. One of the most heated rivalries in glory history. Broodheart and the man nicknamed the best, Cedric Doombay. And Doombay's coming up on the ring apron.